How's it going everyone? Venom Astaire. I have an exciting replay for you today. It's an exclusive from Liquid Snoot, one of my favorite pro gamers, and probably the best Zerg in Heart of the Swarm. He's bottom left of Dusk Towers. His opponent this game, playing on a barcode, is Polt, the Korean player who uh, went very far in many GSLs and won a GSL Super Tournament, so an incredible player. One of the highest winning players ever. He's won many lands and has earned lots of money. Over 400 G's, I think. So Standard stuff going on here. And Snoot is from Norway, the Norwegian player. He's a very macro-oriented player. This is a guy who strives for macro games. He doesn't cheese a lot. He's very straight up. His builds are well thought out and he techs up a lot, he makes lots of drones, so he's a good person to learn from. Standard stuff from Polt. As we see a very likely Reaper expand, almost certain. One thing I like to point out here is Polt didn't make his barracks flush, like he's not going to be able to wall with another add-on or another depot. This gives him the ability to make an add-on and swap very easily without lifting. If you're wondering why he built it that way. <laughs> and after his Reaper, he's going to expand. Snoot, of course, is building his pool after he takes his gas. So everything is standard. I'm going to kick it up to times two. Polt's going to take his second depot. His Reaper will finish. And he lifts there and makes a Marine and then a Factory. This marine is a great move because it prohibits Snoot from scouting. So Snoot is ready for this reaper. He has lings ready, but not queens just yet. The reaper picks off one ling. It might get a drone here, and it runs forward, tries to pressure onto the queen. Snoot makes a spore. Great move. It cancels the spore to save the drone. So with two queens out, Snoot is pretty much impervious to this Reaper. Polt can proke and prod and do what he wants, but can't really kill drones. Polt, of course, has made a factory. He's building one Widow Mine out of it, and he's going for a fast starport. <laughs> now this in conjunction with this anti-scouting Marine on patrol leads me to believe that he'll be rushing drop and probably doing a Widow Mine drop. Now, Polt is a player who often makes a fast Viking, nicknamed the Polt Viking. The point of this is to kill overlords and inhibit your opponent from knowing when you're going to drop. I really like this move a lot, but I do not think that's what Polt is doing this game. He's also getting a tech lab on his factory, which indicates to me he's going to go siege tank, probably in some sort of tank evac play. So Polt starts a siege tank as well as a medevac. Snoot scouts with his lings. What does he see? Sees the tech lab. Does not see the starport. <laughs> so it's hard to tell what Polt will do with this initially. He might push with the army and load the tank up. I honestly thought this would just be a straight up widow mine drop. Okay, so that's what it might be actually as he boosts across the map. Snoot has taken a third. His lings are ready to intercept this reaper. His creep spread has already started to go down to his third, which is important. Especially when dealing with tank of axe. Here's the infamous Polt Viking. I love this. Even though he went for a quick drop play, he still made the Viking. This is incredible. This Viking is going to make it so hard for Snoot to defend Polt's multitasking and drop. Because even if you're an exceptional player, if you can't see the medevacs coming, it's almost impossible to defend. So Snoot is ready for this. He has this completely stifled. Queen's on each side. Polt, in fact, is a little bit trapped. He even has spores. So Snoot has done an exceptional job defending this. And the medevac will be forced to leave without doing a damn thing. Fortunately for Polt, he has this Viking, which, as you can see, 
all he has to do is queue up on a move commands and it will wreak havoc across the map. Polt perhaps will try to clear some creep spread with this failed drop. Meanwhile, in Camp Snoot, we have a lair on the way. Double ups already started. And if we go to income, they're about even. As we see more overlords being harried by this Viking. Now, fortunately for Snoot, he's gotten overlord speed, so this won't be catastrophic. But it's still very annoying. And these Vikings, this Viking does still serve the purpose of clearing out overlords. It's, Snoot does a nice little transfuzzle there to save this one. Cutesy little marine push here from Polt. I would suspect to scan at any moment, but he doesn't have the energy. Snoot tries to scout Polt, but really only sees the fact that he has a third. I really like the siege tank because this map can be fairly difficult to hold your third on as we see a little bit of pressure here on the front door of Snoot who has three forward queens which I love this is not only good defensively but also enables Snoot to deal with offensive liberator obnoxiousness somewhat but more importantly spread creep so now that Polt has the energy for a scan he's going to kill some of Snoot's creep spread <coughs> It appears as though Snoot is going the Nurchio style, I call it, which is roaches with fast lair and infester. Notice that Snoot already has these expensive 2-2 Zurg attack and carapace upgrades on the way, and Polt just started his. Now Polt might have gotten that fast Viking, that fast mine, that fast drop, that fast tank, but that delays these upgrades. So we're seeing Polt's early pressure kind of we're seeing the cost of it. He's kind of having to pay for his early pressure. Not to say that it was a complete failure. He did limit creep spread and limit vision. Let's look at let's look at Snoot's vision. He's going to be hard pressed to see drops coming from a long way away. Oops. As Snoot goes out to take a fourth, he tries to pressure away the Marines, but Polt has a lot of Jim Rainers, a lot of Jim Rainers, and he's going to cancel this fourth. Actually, just kills it. Polt again scanning to clear creep. This is very intelligent. Snoot has so many queens. Queens are very tanky, especially considering the two carapace upgrade that's about to finish. And he will also, ooh, Fungal narrowly misses there. That would have been disaster for Polt. As the widow mine goes off. So I really like this mass queen style from Polt, or excuse me, from Snoot, because not only is it good, very good defensively and good against drops, keep in mind that Ravagers will be hard pressed to hit drops that aren't fungled. It's also very good in the sense that queens are tanky units with transfuse. Whenever you hear someone say queens are tanky, and you're like, oh, they only have 175 HP, what they mean is, yeah, 175 HP is quite a bit, but they also have transfuse. So oftentimes, queens can live multiple lives in a sense. And let's see if they do that here. There's one. That's one life. A queen is like a cat. It has multiple lives. So Pulp pushes out with two siege tanks here. He also has plus two, plus two started, and down syndrome shot, a.k.a. Marauder slow. Droopy fungal onto the tanks and the tanks get pummeled with corrosive bile. Polt sieges another tank in the background, but Snoot has so much Zerg and an incredible amount of health with an upgrade advantage and, an, <laughs> and a unit advantage. Uh, Snoot really doesn't have to really worry about Polt too much here. <clears throat> Liberators and siege tanks are worrisome, however. This bio, not particularly worrisome. As we see, Snoot is having trouble spreading creep. Polt has done a great job limiting this all game. And finally, Snoot has his hive on the way, so you can start the timer for the Terran player because Ultralis will be on the field very soon. 
Snoot has a supply advantage, but Polt has the strong units of Liberators and Tanks and is sieging up on the slow ground to pressure the fourth. Another engagement coming forward. Great Fungal that traps very, very many units. A handful of Medivacs, which is actually quite a few, because if we go to units, Polt's down to three, and he's stemming a lot. Another Medivac goes down. Polt wants to be making Liberators, not Medivacs. It's very important. Snoot gets another pretty good fungal down with more corrosive biles and pushes the Terran army back, but kind of throws some of his army away piecemeal here as Snoot commits a bit of a mistake after a great move. And Polt has a fourth. I'm sure this will be a PF soon as you see a droopy drop in the main. This is, a, this is the downside to this Roach Ravager style. It's very hard to defend multitask without mutas. And remember, those Vikings early on set Polt up to do that. Thankfully for Snoot, he made extra queens, and they were able to supplement his lack of mutas. Liberator shots are trying to kill drones, but Snoot snuffs it out with Ravagers, and suddenly our Norwegian hero is doing very well against our excellent Korean player. You can see that despite Polt's multitask, and the fact that he set up his multitask by the, using the Vikings and whatnot, Snoot was able to snuff that out, and Polt was really relying on that doing damage because his push did not crack the fourth of Snoot, and his drop didn't do any damage, his libs didn't do any damage. And this is a orbital command, not a PF, which is great news for Snoot. So Polt has a beautiful pre-spread here, and they're going to engage. Polt goes for it, doesn't really resplit his units particularly well when he A moved, and takes a droopy fungal in the mouth for his trouble. And Snoot just has an absurd amount of units barreling down on Polt's front door. Polt has a lot of production and 3 3 upgrades on the way, though. Snoot is killing this wall that Polt made, but Polt is at 108 supply. He's down almost 60 supply to Snoot, so all the depots dying don't even supply block him. Many Marauders fall victim to Corrosive Bile. <laughs> Remember, Polt got decimated by Nurcio, who used this style. So I think maybe Polt has trouble playing against this style more than most, or excuse me, more than most other styles. As we see, Polt cancels, or excuse me, Polt loses his fifth. But Snoot's going to be forced to back off here. He's starting 3-3 three, three upgrades for his range ground units, which is a bit odd. Nice fungal as more corrosive bile comes down and rain upon rain down upon the trapped units of Polt. And more roaches stream across the map. If we go to structures, no ultra cavern. So Snoot is preferring to stick it out with this range ground army. Thirteen more roaches in production. Roaches are streaming across the maps. Snoot might have to be careful because Polt still has a ton of production. And with tank of axe, Snoot can kind of be chased down and pummeled. Polt lost a relatively decent amount. He lost his entire forward wall, which will be annoying if Snoot decides to multitask. He lost his second factory with Tech Lab, which is annoying because he's playing against a ground style. However, he did not lose his fourth. So Snoot takes a fifth base after that push. <laughs> Polt continues to produce siege tanks, which is the right move. And if we look at income, Polt is slaughtering Snoot because of mules. And a double drop on the way from Polt, as he knows that the best way to come back against Roach Ravager is make the other player multitask and split their Roach Ravager army. But he's going to fly into Spora, so this could be terrible. Thankfully, he's a Korean pro gamer, so he was watching and doesn't lose a single medevac to Spore Crawlers. In fact, he unloads most of his units successfully. But Snoot saw it coming with these overlords that he's reallocated after the Viking harass. Look at this. This is just great by Snoot, all these overlords. He sees this drop. Once again, 
The style that Pult needs to use, which is a drop-heavy style to counter this Roach Ravager for us, is being stifled. Pult did all the right things early on to open himself up to be in a good position, but Snoot, with that Overlord speed early on, and the intelligence and wherewithal to reallocate all of his overlords to great positions has really taken away Polt's ability to come back into this game. And if we look at Polt's money, he has a lot of gas. This is in part due to losing this factory that he's recently rebuilt. Because that was a very long time that he had to go without being able to spend gas. And Snoot loses an investor, unfortunately, for him. And Snoot is looking up to pressure this fifth base of Polt. He has lots of Roach Ravager. He's completely maxed. But, S but Polt has lots of tanks. Six, in fact. He's forced to lift his base as he doesn't really have a foothold established just yet. And he's being flanked. He's sitting at the base of a ramp trying to defend Big Fungal going down to all the tanks and medevacs and Hellfire raining down upon the Terran army as Snoot came in with an excellent flank and hit Polt right in the suck hole. Polt was stuck between a rock and a hard place because if he moved up, Snoot would have just engaged on him. So we saw a nice macro game between these two players. If you enjoyed it, subscribe.